Welcome to the Electronics Basics series. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications. I'm doing a video every day, so make sure you come back again tomorrow. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about buck and boost converters. I've got a selection just here of different ones. These are all buck converters. Buck converters and boost converters are actually very similar devices. A buck converter is basically a DC to DC converter, and it actually reduces voltage by switching the voltage on and off rapidly in order to give a lower average voltage which is then smoothed out by capacitance and inductor. A boost converter is almost the same. It does exactly the same thing, it's a DC to DC converter and it changes the voltage by pulsing an inductor on and off. And it uses the properties of an inductor to cause an increase in voltage by using its flyback effect. So I put some overlays on top to show what these actually are in a schematic format, a simplified schematic format. So I'll go through each one of these. This is a fixed voltage buck converter. So this is basically done in the 78 series pinout format. This is basically replaces a linear regulator with a switch mode one, or a switching one. This particular one is set up at 5 volts. You can see this one comes in different voltages. These are basically modifiable. We could change the voltage in these if we want to. But this is set up as a 5 volt switching buck converter. So basically, as you can see, there's not much here. You've got a control chip. It's basically an IC which has got a MOSFET and a small controller IC in it which generates a frequency, so it switches at a constant rate. Then it switches through the diode and the inductor to reduce the voltage. And then you've got the capacitors there, which are there to reduce noise and help provide some kind of smoothing on the output. These need more smoothing as well. You put electrolytics after this sort of thing as well to reduce the noise further and reduce the ripple from stuff like that from them. But uh, these actually do quite well. It's a really good little thing to put in instead of a 78 series device because these are much more efficient. This one here is a very similar circuit. This is an adjustable one. See, it's got an adjustment just here. Again, it's got a control chip, which has got a built-in MOSFET. You have an inductor, you've got a diode, you've got some moving caps. No different. Right, nothing on the back. Surprisingly simple circuits. Capacitance is basically there to reduce noise and provide smoothing and stuff like that. So you've got an input coming in over here. This is the output. There's an adjustment, and there's a resistor divider network just here on the sense pin. So this adjustment range, by changing the dividers or changing this variable resistor here, you can change the output voltage. I've seen boards exactly the same as this, identical board with no adjustment on them, they've just got the resistors there instead to provide a preset voltage. I think it's rated at 2 amps, this is rated at 1 amp, I think at 1.5 amps, this one's rated at 2.5 amps, or 3 amps, something like that, I can't remember exactly, and this has obviously got a much larger control chip on it. LM2596S is the control chip on this one, and it's basically the same as this board, but scaled up Bigger inductor, because the higher the current, the bigger the inductor needs to be, because it's passing through that inductor in a buck converter case. So buck converters, the power passes through the inductor. Okay, so I'll put an overlay up, which shows a diagram. So the supply comes in. There's a switch in series with the supply, which is from the MOSFET built into this chip. What it does is it dumps a whole lot of energy into the inductor. Don't forget, inductors resist a change in current passing through them. It's building up energy in a magnetic field. And then when the switch turns off again, it dumps energy back out. So that provides a stepping down and smoothing effect. Because when it's basically connected and shorting out through this inductor, so you'll see like a, a stepped waveform coming through the switch for, to the inductor. And then the inductor then releases the energy. When the switch opens up, the, the inductor is what powers the circuit. Then you have a smoothing cap on the output to smooth that noise out and keep the ripple down a bit and help to stabilise it. This is why switching power supplies are noisier, because you are switching the power on and off rapidly, and you're relying on circuitry and filtering to smooth that back out again. Now on a boost converter, which I don't have an example of here, it's almost the same circuit, except the inductor is in a different place. It's in series with it, and the switch is across the supply. So what you get then is, is a flyback effect from the coil. Same principle, you're shorting it out, building up energy in the, in the inductor. Exactly the same as a buck converter. But then when the switch opens, the energy can pass straight through into the circuit but it does it in a different way. It amplifies, it adds that voltage onto the original voltage because it's got its own energy built up in the inductor and then when that circuit is opened, that voltage and energy on the inductor gets added to the supply rail. It adds them together because the supply rail is still there. You know like putting two batteries in series, exactly the same as that. And that's how you get a boost in voltage. So using the flyback principle of the inductor 
and that release of magnetic energy converted back into current and voltage again. And in fact, it's in series with a supply rail, means it gives you that boost instead. There's not much difference between them. They are very similar devices between a buck and a boost. So obviously these are very really common ones you can get from AliExpress. I mean, I, these are all from AliExpress. And these are great for hobbyists, right? If you're looking for simple buck converters to use, these are really cheap. You know, you're talking about two or three dollars for these things. Good things to play around if you blow one up. It's not a big deal, we just replace it. They're cheap enough to not worry about. If you blow one up at the end of the world, you haven't wasted $20. You might have wasted 2 or $3, it's not a big deal. I've featured these in lots of mailbag videos. You've seen me buying these in mailbags. Look at mailbag videos, I've probably you know, got them in there somewhere. Mind you, I've got lots of mailbag videos, trying to find them would be hard. I think that covers it, doesn't it? Boost converters, buck converters, the fact that they're similar. Have fun. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if it's your first time here. Check out the rest of the players, which is down here, the video series for beginners. There's a place over here, YouTube thinks you should watch. Over here is a subscribe link, which I think you should do. There's a Patreon support link if you feel like you're inclined to support the channel, give me monthly donations. Bye.